Studying blood pressure and pulse using PowerLab and LT Lab Station software. First, we'll be detecting the pulse deficit using manual methods. The practitioner will place the stethoscope over the patient's heart and count the apical pulse. Press the diaphragm firmly against the chest wall of the left sternum edge. Do not rub the tubing against yourself, the patient, or any other objects while listening. The patient will simultaneously place index and middle fingers on opposite wrist and count their radial pulse. Each person will count the number of beats in 30 seconds. Double these numbers and record on your worksheet. Repeat three times and find the average. The following is a data table comparing radial versus apical heart rates. Next, we'll be determining blood pressure with the power lab using sounds of Kortkopf. View the following video for proper equipment setup. Blood pressure cardio microphone equipment setup. Leave the pressure transducer plugged into input 1 on the power lab. Move the pulse transducer from input 2. Connect the cardio microphone to input 2. Ensure the pressure transducer is attached to the sphygmomanometer cuff. Wrap the cuff around the upper arm of your volunteer. Place the cardio microphone over the brachial artery. Hold it in place with a Velcro strap. The proper setup is diagrammed here. Press start and inflate the cuff to 30 millimeters higher than the estimated systolic pressure. Now slowly reduce the pressure in the cuff. Wait for the sounds of Korotkov to be picked up by the cardio microphone. Press stop when the sound is fully dissipated. Now we will analyze the data. During the analysis, we'll discount the noise picked up by the cardio microphone as the blood pressure cuff was inflated. A period of silence is achieved when the systolic pressure is overcome and we slowly begin to release the pressure in the cuff. The first sound of Korotikov begins to appear when the blood pressure in the cuff matches that of the patient's systolic pressure. The last sound of Korotkov is heard when the patient's diastolic pressure matches that of the pressure in the cuff. After which, the cardio microphone ceases to pick up any sound. Calculate the systolic pressure by placing your marker tool at the first sounds of Kortikoff. Then follow the vertical line up and find the corresponding pressure. Follow the same procedure using the last sound of Kortkoff to find the diastolic pressure. Shortly, I will be presenting a table with the data gathered from three separate trials. Use this data to determine the average of the systolic and diastolic pressures. Use the averages calculated from the previous table to determine both the pulse pressure and the mean arterial pressure. Next, we will be measuring the systolic pressure using the Power Labs pulse detector. We will be using the Power Labs pulse detector to gather and analyze data pertaining to the hydrostatic effects on blood pressure. 
Connect the pressure transducer to input 1 on the power lab. Ensure the pressure transducer is attached to the sphygmomanometer cuff. Wrap the cuff around the arm just above the elbow. Connect the pulse transducer to input 2. Attach the pulse transducer to the finger on the same side as the cuff. Use the Velcro strap to attach it firmly. Have patient begin in a resting position. Press start and inflate the blood pressure cuff until it is above the systolic pressure. At this time you should notice that the trace in the pulse window goes flat. Keep deflating the blood pressure cuff until the signal in the pulse window is regained. Reappearance of the pulse signal signifies the systolic pressure. Use the marker tool and follow the vertical line to find the corresponding systolic pressure. We will use this same procedure to determine the patient's systolic blood pressure under three separate other conditions. Condition number one, the patient will raise their arms above their head for two minutes continuously prior to measurement. Condition number two, blood pressure will be taken immediately after patient stands up from a resting position. And condition number three, Blood pressure will be taken after the patient has been standing for 5 minutes. We will also need to calculate the patient's heart rate in each one of these conditions. Use the bracket tool to select the region from the start of one beat to the start of the next. Look to the bottom of the screen and determine how much time has elapsed. Finally, divide 60 seconds per minute by the duration of the beat. In this case, we have 0.8 seconds per beat. This will give you the patient's heart rate. Shortly, I will provide a completed data table showing the systolic pressure as well as the patient's heart rate for each one of the four conditions. Here's the final data table comparing the systolic pressure in millimeters mercury with the heart rate of the patient in beats per minute under the four conditions, resting, arms raised continuous for two minutes, immediately after standing from resting position and after standing still for five minutes.